My name is Amanda Stead. I am a professor at um, Pacific University in Forest Grove, Oregon, and my area of specialty is normal healthy aging and Alzheimer's and dementia. So I'm going to be talking to you today a little bit about what it looks like when we're assessing aging adults and a little bit about what normal healthy aging looks like and some considerations for an aging population in general and how you can sort of see the differences between the transfer into maybe a dementia process or Alzheimer's and differentiating a little bit between what's normal and what's not. So, why aging? I think that aging isn't a field that we think about a lot as SLPs, but it's important that you understand what normal is because adults go through a large degree of change um, as they get into later years, and you need to be able to differentiate what is disorder and what isn't. Um, this is part of our quest for evidence-based practice as always. And the question really remains is how can you treat if you don't really know what normal is? And aging itself is the number one risk factor for multiple diseases. So it is critical to be able to understand what this normal change is from disordered change so again we can get there early and have the greatest impact. So this is a chart that the Alzheimer's Association recently put out and I find it really impactful in the way knowing that 54% of Americans are being touched by Alzheimer's currently, and this is before the numbers are sort of rapidly rising with the baby boomers generation. So about 2% we're looking at have it themselves. 29% of people are commenting that they have a relative with Alzheimer's disease. Lots of people have really close friends, coworkers, siblings, spouses, or partners. But the idea is that this disease is largely reaching its fingers into all of our lives, and it's important to sort of be able to catch it early, which is part of this normal aging piece. The other idea behind catching Alzheimer's early and differentiating normal is because the cost of caring is so extreme. Keeping people in their home for just one more year, keeping them in less restrictive environments saves the country billions, frankly. And even as a spousal or children or sort of a familiar member, you're looking at a lot of financial contribution. You're also looking at the sheer manpower of hours that people are giving for caregiving. So early identification, differentiation from normal helps sort of scale all of this back or at the very least delay the amount of time, the duration that you'll have to do it. Keeping people more independent is really important. So when we're talking about aging, really, what do we mean? And I've put in all of these little anecdotes about aging because there is a lot of comedy associated with getting older. So age doesn't make you forgetful. Having way too many stupid things to remember makes you forgetful. So just to clear up a couple of the terms we're going to be talking about, healthy is really the lack of neurological disease or disorder that interferes with this ability. So we're talking about people that don't have neurological insult when we say healthy normally in this sort of context. Normal or neurologically intact is sort of interchangeable with healthy depending on context. Normally when we say aging, we mean 65 or older. There have been some research studies that have included people in their 50s, but again, I think people in their 50s would be a little irritated by that. Overall health and well-being depends on many factors. So it's not just about your age, that chronological number that's assigned to us all. It's a lot about how you feel, your integration into society, your sort of social contacts, and what you're doing. So chronological age is only part of it. We have a lot of other health issues and our perception of our health that change things a great deal. And there are lots of rewards to aging as well. So there really isn't an answer to why we age. There are a lot of theories about why things are changing as we get older, a couple of which, ah, okay. A couple of which would be like transmission deficit, which is poor target activation because of weakened memory. So the idea that your memory as sort of an infrastructure is getting weaker overall, just leading to everything sort of falling away.